Hey everyone, this week we're continuing the series on 25 things I do to grow my blogging business. We're still in the SEO silo and we're talking about uh, silos of authority. Now this is the kissing cousin to topic clusters that we talked about in the early planning phase, but we're gonna go a little deeper and do a little more work to make sure that we're writing the right things. My name's Leslie Peterson and I help bloggers grow their business consistently and with a plan. I hope you'll subscribe here if you find this helpful and don't forget to download my free blog post update checklist from the link below. Okay, let's talk about silos of authority. Now imagine this, imagine you have uh, written content on Google and Google indexes it quickly, they find it quickly, they rank it quickly. I mean, that's what we're all after, right? But the problem is that many times as bloggers, we get this idea about what we wanna write or we find an amazing keyword and it doesn't align with the content that we already have on our blog. Now, it might even still be in the same niche, but we don't have the supporting documentation in place to tell Google that we have the expertise to speak on this topic. And that's what silos of authority do. They tell Google, hey, we're an authority, we're an expert in this area, we've got the knowledge, the know-how, and you should rank our content faster, higher, better, because we know all there is to know on a given topic. Now we can't have those conversations with Google, so we have to show that, to demonstrate that. So I remember when I first started blogging, I would just get an idea here and an idea there, and I would post it, and I would cross my fingers, and I would hope that this time it would work, even if I was seeking out backlinks, or even if I did the keyword research. But what I began to notice was that when I reinforced my authority on an area, so for example, I, was, uh, I started out as an Atlanta hyperlocal blogger. So as I reinforced my uh, understanding of where to have a date night in Atlanta, Google really saw that and began to um, uh, um, promote my content in that capacity. The posts I wrote were rising. Um, they really saw me as an expert at where to go on a date night in Atlanta. And so I said, I said to myself, you know what? There's a method to this madness. So then I started looking at other pieces of content and reinforcing that, and lo and behold, it worked. So I'm gonna tell you how and how I did that and what strategy I used. So you're gonna go back to the previous um, series and listen to topic clusters if you haven't already, and I'll link to that above. Um, but you're going to take your topic cluster idea and you're gonna really break it out into a silo. And we're gonna look for the right keywords and determine if these are topics that we should write on and look to see how many um, articles we need in order to reinforce that, um, that expertise. So let me give you an example. That's the best way to start, right? So um, as a travel writer, I might write about things to do in Chattanooga, which is just a day trip away from Atlanta. So I could absolutely go to Chattanooga visit for an extended period of time, maybe go multiple times and really get a feel for the city and then write a post about things to do in Chattanooga and then move on to the next thing. And that's what most of us do. We have a good idea, we go and do the research, we write a good post and we move on to the next thing. But that's not going to tell my readers or Google that, um, that I'm an expert in Chattanooga, that I've been over a dozen times and I know all the cute little things to do and not just the surface level um, things to do. So when I came up with my idea for uh, my topic cluster for things to do in Chattanooga, I said, you know what, there's free things, there's three things with kids, there's lots of breweries, there's railroad history, um, there's a great aquarium, um, there's um, sensational restaurants, there's a downtown area and then an expanded area and the expanded area, there's hikes to do. So there, I, in my topic cluster research, I came up with all these ideas. And that was my planning phase. But now, as you're trying to build your, your um, silo of authority, you wanna look at those ideas and see which ones you're actually going to write on. So what you'll wanna do is to go into your tool of choice. My tool of choice is SEMrush, and I'll put a link to that below. Maybe it's Rank IQ, that's another great option. But you're gonna go into your, um, your tool of choice and you're gonna look at the actual keywords that you want to target 
for each one of those um, ideas in your topic cluster. So for my things to do in Chattanooga post, things to do in Chattanooga was the, tar was the term I wanted to target. Then I said, you know what, there's so many things to do just right downtown. So let me look at downtown. So I looked through the downtown Chattanooga words, um, looked at all the different variations and came up with a keyword for that. Did the same thing for breweries and the aquarium and the skydiving uh, or the um, hang gliding place there that you can um, explore. But then I had a couple other keywords like free things um, to do and then the with kids the hiking, some of those, the keyword volume was too low, so I decided I wasn't gonna write for them. Some of those were way too difficult, so I would have had to have, you know, 50 different Chattanooga articles in order to do really well with that, and I just wasn't committed to doing that many of them because I couldn't find enough um, that uh, met my, my uh, target keyword volume threshold. Um, so I put those to the, to the side and I came up with a good list. I think we landed on 12 or 15 different uh, topics or specific keywords um, to write uh, posts for. So then I looked at that list and I said, okay, one of these has gonna be my overarching post. That's gonna be my pillar post. That's gonna be the post about Chattanooga. And the others are going to be my supporting posts. So it turns out that things to do in Chattanooga makes a great overarching post. And then all the rest of those posts are my supporting posts. So I'll write the things to do in Chattanooga post, and then I'll write the supporting posts, and I'll make sure I link from the pillar post to all the supporting posts because I want to push that authority down. But now I've got um, a, a cluster of content on Chattanooga so it's going to help reinforce my authority on that city, my expertise in that city. Now, do I have as much expertise as somebody who lives there for 25 years? Probably not. But I've got a good wealth of information. Um, I've got the assigned keywords for each of the supporting posts and the pillar posts, and I know which ones I'm gonna write and which ones I'm not gonna write. So a couple things you'll wanna think about. Um, what is your monthly volume threshold? So for example, for me, I don't typically write articles less than 1500 in monthly search volume, that's SEM Rush's uh, number, and I definitely don't write them if they're below 750. It's just not worth my time because there's so many amazing keywords available to me. And then you've gotta look at the difficulty that works for you which, um, what's the, what difficulty levels too um, difficult for you, where you are in your blog right now, for you to rank on. So I look at that. Then I also look at the intention of the keyword and make sure um, that it works for me. So for example, if I were gonna write about hotels in Chattanooga, well, all the hotels in Chattanooga posts um, that rank on page one, they're all Expedia companies. There's no bloggers there. So I'm generally not going to write a post like that or think that I can rank on a post like that as part of my silo structure. So those are the considerations I have. And now the other question I get is, well, how many supporting posts and pillar posts do I need? And well, that depends on a couple of things. I hate that it depends answer, but it's true. Um, it depends on how much competition you have. So if I have a lot of competition, then I'm gonna look for more supporting posts. If I have a little bit of competition, then I don't need as many supporting posts. And that competition means how many people are out there? How many people are out there uh, winning for that term already? And what's their DA look like compared to my DA? What's my ability to get backlinks on that topic? Can I get backlinks, a lot of backlinks from Chattanooga? Um, or is it gonna be harder for me to get backlinks for Chattanooga? And I need to build um, more supporting structure um, that way to, to demonstrate my expertise a little bit more than I would on, let's say something in Atlanta, which is where most of my content lies. Uh, the other thing you wanna think about is um, the volume of posts that you have. So I'll give you an example. We have a lot of Florida content. So obviously I have a pillar post for Florida, things to do in Florida, but I also have sub pillar posts. So um, those, the, the supporting posts for things to do in Florida are things to do in the Panhandle, things to do in South Florida, things to do in Central Florida. Um, so those posts become pillar po uh, supporting posts to the things to do in Florida and then things to do in South Florida. Well, there's a lot. So under that, there might be things to do in Miami. So that's a pillar post and also a supporting post. 
and under things to do in Miami, I have free things to do in Miami. And then I have the tours that we really like in Miami and the boat, uh, where to rent boats. So uh, you can see that your pillar and support structures might be hierarchical. So depending on um, how big your topic cluster is, it might demand of you a, a several hierarchy um, level deep um, structure. It might be very shallow, like my things to do in Chattanooga is things to do in Chattanooga, and then some supporting posts. Or it might be deeper, like my things to do in Florida posts. And again, if you're not in travel, this still applies to you. That just happens to be the niche that I'm in. But regardless of how uh, deep or shallow your hierarchy is, how many supporting posts you have, how few supporting posts you have, you definitely want to use your topic clusters to build your expertise in the eyes of your reader and in the eyes of Google. And you want to use the tool of choice to determine what the exact target keyword will be for each one of those posts that you want to build. And you need to look at this search volume, the intention and the difficulty level to know which of those posts you should actually write and which ones aren't going to work for you. Um, and then you want to put your plan in place to write them. Now, the other question I get is, does it matter if I do supporting posts before pillar posts or pillar posts before supporting posts? Does not matter. You can do them in any order that you want. Just remember to go back and make sure that you always link from your pillar post to your supporting posts. Okay, so now you've taken your topic cluster that we talked about in the previous um, video and you identify which of those you're going to actually be writing for, which keywords you're going to be targeting, how many supporting posts you're going to have, what your pillar posts are, and uh, how deep your, uh, your hierarchy structure goes in order to uh, write the content that you want to write and demonstrate the expertise that you need to demonstrate. I hope that helps. Next week we'll talk a little bit more about those supporting posts.